from one emotive matter to an even more emotive one. It's the clash between farmers and herdsmen, this time around occurring again in Benue. Uh, joining me now to discuss this matter is Honorable Mark Bila, who is representing Gwe East and Gwe West federal constituencies in Benue State. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you, Marpa. Good morning. Yeah, we've seen all the solutions, uh, you know, that have been proffered, you know, before now, farmers and herdsmen. We've seen that uh, the Benue State government has tried to give land, uh, you know, allocate some land in conjunction with the Nasarawa State government. Uh, but it would look like all of this is beginning to defy solutions. We heard that only a couple of days ago that there was another attack and about six people were killed in that attack. Um, yes, so what, what precisely is going on? Well, um, your guess is as good as mine. I have no guesses. You know, so uh, let me start by first of all, you know, commiserating with the people of Bemacha and Shaw, Council Wards in Gwe East, people of Burukuan Logo, and also local government in Benue State, over the loss of lives. We're counting so far 25 lives have been lost. 25? Yes. It's up from the 6th then? Yes, it's up from 6th. It's only in Gwe East, in Burukwan Logo. We have another 20 plus lives that have been lost. Now, it's important to note that it appears as if we continue to have this recurring decimal of discussions over this issue without any commensurate action by the federal government. Because if we're to borrow a leaf from what the northern governor said, they said they believe that these herdsmen are coming in from Senegal and Mali. That means Nigeria is under siege, and that is a military response that is required. Are we saying that our military is no longer competent to protect us? Section 14, subsection 2B of Nigeria's constitution clearly states that security and welfare of the people is the primary responsibility of government. But my people and I have been left out of this Nigerian project because we do not believe that we are being protected. Because we know the modus operandi of these herdsmen, but our military and other security agencies do not appear to know what it is. And what is this modus operandi? They come grazing cattle, sometimes welding automatic rifles, when there's an altercation, they go back and regroup. That means they have a team of armed people waiting somewhere in the bushes, and then they come and kill our people with impunity. Are you saying then that it was an altercation? Because we understand that in this incident, even though some people deny it, that uh, one of the herdsmen was killed, um, and then this, this reprisal seemed to happen in retaliation. Now, there are conflicting stories mm -hmm. about what happened. One of the stories on the part of the herdsmen say their cattle were attacked, were mutilated. Some say a herdsman was killed. And on the other part of the communities, they say that they confronted them when they came with a massive number of cows into their farmland and that that is what resulted in the eventual clash. Now, these are the things that the security agencies are supposed to ascertain because these are all reports from both sides of those people who were involved in these um, attacks. Are you saying that there's been no investigation going on in, in this no, respect? But, 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 no, but you know that this is a recurring decimal. We talk about this daily on TV. There are no investigations that we are aware of. Let me even point to the fact that last year in February, the president set up a panel that I don't know if you know the composition of who the membership of that panel is. There has been no report that you and I can refer to. And that report was supposed to investigate the, out, the, 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 uh, the cause of the killings then in Agatu, where 300 plus people were killed. Now, this has become something that is occurring with impunity in our communities with no response by the military. Now, I wonder what our people are now supposed to do. Now, this is an issue that is gradually degenerating to the point of self-help.
Mm. I'm, I'm looking at the solutions. I, we do know that uh, the state government has tried a number of solutions. The governor yes. has been very concerned. He's raised a de delegation to the federal level. But, be, you know, beyond that, he's also trying to see how he can rally the people and see how it is he can speak to herdsmen, the, the uh, herdsmen community, and see how it is that they can come to some, you know, some agreement, some mode of reconciliation. Is it that that is not holding any water at all? Now, we must commend Governor Samuel Otum. He has been doing the yeoman's job in trying to manage this crisis in the state. But you and I need to understand that there's a limit to what the state government can do when it comes to deploying the federal might. That is left to the federal government to do. The State Emergency Management Agency has been responding. Even recently, they've already responded to the issue in, Bur in Buruku. He has deployed them to respond similarly in other locations in the state and he has been trying to manage as much as possible the relationship between these herdsmen and the communities but it appears that these herdsmen are bent on attacking people in Benue state who are legitimately within their own farmland that they own which is their means of livelihood now, this is the fundamental issue as a nation we need to face. Will someone else, because he's trying to maintain his means of livelihood, come and encroach on another person in his own fatherland because he has a freedom of right of movement? Now, these are the issues we need to address as a nation. And that will bring us two solutions which we appear not to be able to start to implement in this country. And if you allow me, I'll start to reel out a couple of solutions. Well, very quickly, because we're going to be out of time shortly. Yes. One of them, obviously, is the fact that there needs to be an enabling law banning nomadic cattle rearing in this country. All over the world, many countries who have a lot more cattle than we do have transcended that practice. The, the first one is banning the law, um, banning, making yes. a law. The second one is deployment of special military units to those areas to have a permanent presence so they can respond quickly. These are things that in, in the war room, countries deploy aircraft carriers to regions where there's trouble so they can equip immediately respond. I want to commend the Chief of Army staff. They have proposed to do that in Kaduna, but it has not been implemented. P places that in Benue, for instance, we have had no such intervention at all. And then there's a need to immediately commence reconstruction and rehabilitation of these areas. There's so much money the government is pumping in the Northeast without realizing that the herdsman crisis has assumed a greater dimension than Boko Haram attacks. Is the government aware of this? Statistics have shown last year and in 2014, more deaths occurred from herdsmen attacks than Boko Haram. Yes, it's commendable. The army is tackling that crisis, but there's another one looming that we're not taking immediate action about. Mm. So the first one, which is a law, which you're proposing, I know that the House of Reps did come up with a, a proposition at some point which was uh, kicked down very vehemently, something about a grazing law. Uh, this proposition you have, have you bounced it off your colleagues to see how it's going yes, to be Yes, there's, there's a bill right now which has gone through second reading about the issue of ranches because nobody is favorably disposed to any issue of grazing. These were archaic decisions that were made very early in Nigeria's history when the level of development and economic investments had not occurred. There is no space anywhere for grazing roots, and that is not the practice globally. It is ranches that is a global practice, and it's a business somebody ventures into. So that is something that we should immediately implement. The president should call for the immediate disarmament of these herdsmen because we have a firearms act of 1990 which is they clearly violate and nobody seems to be taking any action against them so i wonder what uh, security agencies are doing these people are in plain sight carrying rifles 
and this is something that is against our laws. And we need to also look at the convening of maybe a, some sort of a national discourse to properly intimate all stakeholders about the laws that subsist and the plans the government has.